<laughs> All right, my name's uh, Jay Machado. I'm a senior hard surface modeler at Industrial Light and Magic, and I've been there for about five years. Worked on a few things there, uh, Transformers 4, uh, Episode 7, Rogue One. I'm now working on the Millennium Falcon ride for Disney and um, parts of the Favreau TV show that's coming out for Star Wars, which is pretty cool. It's gonna be, gonna be fun, groundbreaking stuff. I started in 2013 as a junior artist. I was the, I was the second uh, junior modeler they'd hired in, in quite some time. And um, yeah, they, they, they actually contacted me. They'd seen my reel from Noman and it didn't really like work out right away. First there wasn't budget and then there, you know, the timing was bad for me. I was I just started a job at Sony Santa Monica and eventually everything kind of came together and, and I moved up there and but yeah, it's it's been I mean it's it's the dream. It's the dream job and I, I, I absolutely love it. And it's it's funny to think that like ten years ago, you know, I was working at Target and, you know, paying my way through Nomen and and it's just, it's been, a, it's been a ride for sure. <laughs> I, I went to school for illustration and graduated and couldn't find any work. And after a few years of that, I was like, you know what? I, you know, I gotta focus, I gotta get back to school. And I'd started to be kind of interested in 3D modeling and, and you know, Noman, I, we'd seen Noman DVDs at, at my college. And I was like, I'm gonna check this school out. And, and I, you know, I came for an open house. It's actually funny. On the way to the open house, I got in a car accident, and like they totally totaled my car. They re rear-ended me, and, and it was just—it was bad. But I made it to late to the open house and saw it, and I, it was just this weird feeling where the adrenaline was kind of going. But I, I, I knew just looking around the campus that this is where I needed to be. And my mom, who was with me, she was like, she's like, like this is like I, I, I can see you here, you know. It, it makes sense to me, and it was, it was really cool. So yeah, I mean, I started in 2009, graduated in 11. The first, uh, I think, five or six terms here, my work was all garbage. It was terrible. And then at a certain point, it just started to click. I mean, I, I feel like I owe Noman everything because I came here without any knowledge of 3D. And um, I left with all the tools I needed to work in the industry. And now it's like I'm you know, living my dream job. And, but what? What's really funny about it is I didn't even know I wanted to do 3D modeling. I thought I was coming here to learn more about concept art and maybe do a little 3D to kind of assist that. But I really fell in love with, with hard surface modeling and um, you know, I, I kind of like discovered myself here. And so I feel like it's, it, it's, it's been a really important place for me, definitely. Not just for my career, but just like personally, you know? It's really cool. I, I thought that ILM was completely unattainable. I had heard that they don't hire young people, that it's very like an exclusive club and they know what they're doing. And I, I, I don't even remember really applying or anything, but I must have. I went to Cal State Fullerton um, to, for my illustration degree. And I actually went there with the intention of being an animator, 2D animator. And I, was, I took my intro to animation class and I was like, this is too much work. This is not what I want. I want to tell stories. I don't want to just draw 24 hours a day for 10 seconds of footage. So I shifted gears to do illustration. And I think my last semester at Fullerton, I discovered ZBrush. And ZBrush was really like eye-opening for me because I was like, well, if I can sculpt these characters that I want to tell stories about, then I don't have to draw them. I just pose them and then they're, you know, I, maybe I paint over them or something. So my, my drive for 3D kind of started there. I remember vividly that I was sculpting like Batman, just for, you know, I'm a big Batman fan, I'm sculpting Batman, and I wanted to do his utility belt. And I'm trying to like hammer ZBrush around to, to make something hard surface and I was like, this isn't really working. Like, how do I, it's such a simple shape. It's like, a, it's just a little like, you know, donut basically that's flat, you know, flat, it's like a pipe, I guess. And I, um, I did a little research. I found out about Maya and I was like, oh, they taught Maya at my school. I never took that class, but you know, that, I guess I could do the stuff in here, but I opened that program and I was just like, I need help. I can't, I don't know what to do in here. So that was kind of like, you know, I had heard about Noman through, you know, the instructors at my old school showing the DVDs and stuff. 
Um, it was mostly drawing DVDs at that point, but I, you know, I was like, oh, maybe they have some tutorials. And then I found out about the program, and I was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll check this program out. Maybe I'll take some student loans out and, and go through it. And it was so funny, the first actual concept art class I took here was with um, Jared Morantz. And I knew within the first day that my old school just had not prepared me for what I wanted to do. And I felt kind of bitter about it, to be honest. <laughs> but <laughs> I really latched onto this guy, Dustin Blattner, who was my uh, classmate, and we're still good friends. He's a phenomenal character sculptor, really good. He worked on the, the last couple God of War games and um, really talented guy. And I, I immediately recognized this guy's really talented. I gotta be as good as him. I just worked hard at doing these character sculpts and, and trying to be and trying to get to his level. He, he, he was already good when he got here type of thing. It was in the Alex Alvarez portfolio class where Alex said something that really stuck with me where he said, you know, I make these, these creatures, these monsters, people love them or hate them, but I do them because I have to do them. They're in my head and, you know, they have to come out of me. He said something like, this is what I see in my head, this is what I doodle in the margins of my paperwork and sketchbook and stuff. And I looked down at my sketchbook and all I saw was spaceships. And I was like, why am I doing characters? Like, it's so competitive to do characters. Everybody wants to do characters. So. That's, that's when it really clicked and I was like, hard surface modeling is what I'm gonna focus on. And that kind of really took off for me because it wasn't what everybody wanted to do, and it, but it was something that I loved. I mean, I think back to building, you know, Revell model kits and stuff when I, when I was a kid and, and spray painting with my dad and, and all that stuff and building with Legos and it all kind of like came together and that's when I, I really realized this is it, like this is, this is what I wanted to do all along, and I just never even knew it, you know? There was a lot of work. I mean, it, it's a demanding curriculum, and but I, I feel like that's important because you get to the industry, and it is that much work. So it really prepares you for that. I always remember, like, my high school was, was supposed to be this college prep high school, and it was hard. It was a lot of homework. There were all these AP courses. And then when I got to Cal State Fullerton, which is just a state school, it's not even like, you know, a UC school or anything. It was so easy, it was a breeze. And so it really allowed me to, to focus on art at that point, which was really cool. But the industry's tough. So I feel like it's important to ex you know, expose that to students, you know, or expose that to you know, hopeful artists early because it's a reality, you know? There is overtime, there's, you know, there's deadlines, there's crunching, there's all that stuff. And I feel like having such a demanding curriculum is, is part of that. And uh, I also feel like, you know, learning outside of the box that you want to learn in, like learning the whole pipeline is important. It makes you more valuable as an artist. Um, and I mean, I, I was terrible in my effects class, but I know how to do certain things with effects and I appreciate what effects artists do now. And so it, it, it enables me to communicate with them better at work or, or like, you know, riggers, for example. I'm able to help them better by, you know, prepping my models for exactly what they want. And um, having a foundational rigging course here helped me kind of understand what they're dealing with and what they, what they want and what they expect. So I, it, it's super important. I mean, this is a team sport and every, every stop on the pipeline is super important and kind of getting over your, your own ego about, well, I'm gonna make this awesome model, because that needs to be textured, that needs to be rigged, needs to be lit and, and, and rendered and all that stuff. It needs to perform well, it needs to be efficient. There's all these things that go into visual effects that, you know, it, having that understanding of that is, is super important, and not, not just for your own career. I mean, obviously it's been great for my career, but um, just, Learning, learning to not, not only like just sharing credit with people, you know, I see a lot of people that, that, you know, they'll touch a couple bolts on an asset and then you see it on their reel and it's like, well, you gotta, you gotta give people credit for this. Like if you worked with someone else, they deserve credit too. And it's just, you, know, you see a lot of that like shameless self-promotion. And I, I think that having that understanding that this, you know, we're all a team. Is, is super important. I mean, the placement here is phenomenal. I, they placed me in my first couple of jobs, and after that I didn't, I didn't need it anymore because I had some work, I had some experience and stuff. 
they were really good about putting my reel out there on and like on the Nomen like blogs and websites and stuff. And so I got a lot of exposure from that. And you know, it, it didn't take long even for ILM to to look at those those sites and, and find me. Like this guy is a hard surface guy and we need more of those people because a lot of people a lot of people go in and say, oh yeah, I can do hard surface. And then they want to do characters. So they eventually will make the switch. My first couple jobs, I basically, you know, they put the feelers out for me and, and got the ball rolling. And, and I got, you know, it was supposed to be this three week gig. It turned out to be like nine or 10 weeks. It felt so good to just leave all that, that you know, those hard times behind me and say like, oh, this is, this is what I love doing. Now, what I was working on at that time, not the most glamorous thing. It's a straight to DVD kids movie. It's really low budget and, and the quality is not great, but I mean, I, I put myself into it and, and the producer was like, you know, he ended up hiring more Nomen people because of, you know, his impression of me. That's happened to me over and over is, People see how hard I work and, and the level of skill that I'm at, and they go, there's something about this Nomen school, and they hire more Nomen people. And it's, it's I mean, I've, it's, like I said, I've seen that over and over. It's, it's kind of cool, you know? And it, it, I, I, I even overheard one of my supervisors at some point say, like, we need more Nomen people. Like, and it's, 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 it's cool. It's like a sense of pride that, you know, the people that come from this school are just at that level and they've gone through the ringer because it is, it's so difficult here that they're ready for prime time, you know? Most of my day to day is actually in Maya. Uh, we do have proprietary software called Xeno that we use to like check in and a lot of the pipeline tools use that Xeno framework. It's basically, it's similar to uh, Maya referencing where basically Everything lives on disk separately. Your textures live separately, the rig lives separately, the model lives separately, and then it all comes together in what's called a shot file. And basically that's where you, we do the animation and, and all that stuff. So it's mostly like for my particular uh, discipline, it's, it's mostly Maya. So I'm doing my modeling, I'm doing UVs, and then I'm, I'm doing texturing. I've just started to scratch the surface of Substance Painter. Um, because we're doing more real-time stuff, but mostly for texturing we're using Mari. I mean we're always on the lookout for, you know, I'm certainly on the lookout because um, we're diving more into real-time and you know that that's that's it's been difficult to bring some of the film people up to speed so I'm I've got my eyes on you know well what are the kids at Nomen doing? They're all using Substance Painter, they're all doing stuff in Unreal and that's stuff that we kind of need. So bringing someone in with that skill already is obviously huge. It's, it's not like a, a regular university where teachers get tenure, they get comfortable, they lose touch with the industry. And that's really what I felt about my previous school was that these guys aren't worried about the industry at all. Like these guys are, are you know, are worried about you know, getting tenure at their at their university. So I really felt like the education I got there was just completely detached from where the industry's at right now. And my even though I was learning skills that were, would be valuable later, it, it just wasn't at the level that I, I wanted to be. Having the instructors here be industry professionals is is huge just because you get to intermingle with industry professionals and they teach you what you need to know exactly because it's what they're doing at work all day and you know it, they're on the cutting edge because they have to be because it's a fast industry it's demanding and they're teaching you that cutting edge stuff and it's 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 super important I mean like it, it's staying that even staying that relevant while, while you're at while you're at a job is 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 tough and like then coming to you know pass that on that knowledge on to students is is I mean you you got to be sharp. What students don't realize, and I certainly didn't realize, is that you know these people are 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 you know your instructors are kind of like sizing you up and seeing would I work with this guy? Would is he dependable? Can he meet deadlines? You know is the aesthetic there? It, there's all these things and and having that exposure to an industry professional, I mean. That's, that's your reputation right there. So, I mean, uh, like, I, I hate to like do this, but like, uh, my students give me excuses and stuff. I'm like, okay, 
But I mean, that's, that's me judging you, you know? I, I'm gonna take that into account when I'm like, well, do I need, you know, we need a modeler. What about this guy? Well, uh, he didn't do the homework for six weeks, so maybe not dependable, you know? I busted my ass here, you know? And um, I felt like my instructors saw that and they, um, you know, it, it kind of, it helped my reputation, but I didn't even realize it was going on. So it's kind of, it's an interesting dynamic. Instructors here are assigning you tasks as if they were your model supervisor. So it's like you're getting that experience and you may not even realize it because you're, you're just there worried about learning. It's kind of like the social element of the job where it's like, you know, a lot of times your work gets you the job and they just interview you to make sure you're not a weirdo type of thing. And it's kind of like the social dynamic of, of learning here is, is they're, they're seeing, can you take direction? Are you pleasant to be around, you know, <laughs> type of stuff. So I, I think that that's, that's an important aspect of the school as well, you know. I can understand the, the want, like especially from a parent's perspective, the desire to, um, you know, to get that degree. And have, being able to get it here is a huge deal. And I know they've been working on it for years and it's really great that, that it's available now because I mean, having that degree in illustration has, has, you know, sometimes an HR person will only look at that. You guys having that is actually a really huge deal and it's awesome. I'm just amazed at how big the school has grown. There were only like, I think five labs when I got here or something, or maybe even three or four. And now it's just, it's massive. Like I've never even, oh, there's 10? <laughs> 10 labs, that's, that's huge. So it's, it's just, it's amazing to see how, how big the school's gotten and, and just, the level of quality at work. I mean, I look at the, the reel every year, every time you guys put it out, like the, the graduating class or whatever, and I'm just like, man, I couldn't have done this when I was there, you know? It's just, it's become more accessible, it's, it's become more user-friendly, and I mean, it, I, I hate to sound like the old man, but these kids have it so easy with some of these programs, and it's like, it, it's, it's really awesome. The, the level of quality of the work is just astonishing, you know? If you want to work in the visual effects industry, this is the school for you. Stop looking and apply and come here and come join me in the industry. <laughs> Dude, this is super fun. Like I said, like I, I feel like I owe this school everything, so anytime. Yes.